Hello, in this video, we are going to increase the speed of our API by creating a Redis caching layer above our API. And the good news is you don't need prior knowledge in uh, Redis. In fact, if you do not have Redis in your skill set, uh, this is the best place to start with because what we're going to do is very easy and simple, but the results are significant and immediate. Now, let me show you what we're going to do here. So on the left, we have the basic structure, our API fetch uh, from the database and then just handed the data to the client. On the right hand, what we're going to do is we are going to create a caching layer. So when the request hit our API endpoint, our API is going to first check if we have a copy of this information already cached on the Redis server. And if we do, we will just hand it to the client. But if you do not have a copy, we will fall back to the structure on the left. We are going to fetch uh, the data from the database and we're going to hand it to the user. But before we do that, we are going to take a copy of these information and we're going to keep it, uh, we're going to save it on the cache. So the subsequent requests will be served from the cache. So what you're going to need here is you will need to install the PHP library that will allow us to connect and communicate with the Redis server. I have installed uh, PRedis. You can install it using the composer. And they are giving us a, a example about how we can instantiate the uh, library and you can keep going down and you're going to see they have a documentation about all the functions that comes with uh, the library. Now, let me go to my code. Uh, first, what, we're gonna ha what we have here is we receive the profile ID from the post and then we uh, get the user details from the database and then we prepare the data to the format that our uh, front end expect and then we uh, encode the data using JSON. Let me show you the SQL and the prepare data functions. This is the SQL function. It has a simple query. It just fetch uh, the user details and then it left join the user statistics. Let me show you our database we have the users table and also we have user statistics table so after our function fetch uh, the data from uh, the sql we fetch the data and then we use the prepared data again it strip out uh, all the unnecessary data and just keep the data that our front end will need now back to the profile, till now there is nothing fancy, it's just an API that fetch data from a uh, database and just hand it to the user. So what we're going to do now is we are going to create a caching layer. So the first thing we're going to do is I will define the cache key name. I'm going to say the name going to be user uh, colon and then profile ID. The naming convention here is to use the type or the category of the data and then you use the ID. So if you're saving user details, you're going to say user colon and user ID. If you're going to save post data, you're going to say post and then the post ID. You can use a colon or underscore. It's all up to you. So I'm going to say uh, profile details. I'm going to fetch, uh, try to uh, fetch the data from the cache. I'm going to say user details equal to Redis get uh, cache key name. Now, you might be wondering why we didn't use Redis exists because Redis has a function that check if the key exists or not. But for me, uh, the get function is more efficient because if we uh, use exist and we find the data, we will have to send another request, which is a network request. Uh, and that is not efficient. And I prefer to send only one uh, network request. So the get function, if it finds the data on the server, it just bring it. If it didn't find the data, it return empty. So uh, it's for me, it's more efficient. So I'm going to say if profile details, if we found uh, the data and data is not empty. Now cache hit. Now we found the cache. We can just say echo profile details and we don't need to encode the data again. We have encoded the data before we save it. Now we're going to say else. Otherwise, if we did not find uh, the cache, we are going to fall back to the basic structure. But first, before sending the data or displaying the data, we're going to take a copy and save it on the cache server. So we're going to say save equal Redis set cache key name 
And in the second parameter, we're gonna say JSON data. And there is some additional parameter. This is the TTL, which is the time to live. And if you set number here, this is the number in seconds. This is how long your data or your key will live on the server before it gets deleted. If you leave it empty, uh, your key is gonna persist forever on the server. So I'm gonna go back to uh, the place where we found the cache. And now, because I want to see if the cache hit or not, I'm gonna decode the data. I'm gonna say profile details equal uh, JSON decode profile details. And here I'm gonna say true. So it returned an array. And then I'm gonna say profile details cache equal one. So when we get the request, we will uh, distinguish if, if the, the data is coming from the cache or it's coming from the database. Now I'm going to go to the postman. I'm going to send the request. And I have an error here. It says unexpected token in 25. Yes, I forgot the token. Let me try again. Now, the first time we send the request, we are not going to get the cache equal one because the first time is always from the database. But if we send again, we should get, uh, we are getting an error on line 14. That is because I forgot to re uh, encode the data again. I'm going to say equal JSON encode profile details. Now let's send again. Now we have got the expected information and we have cache equal one, which means this data is coming from the cache. Now, what if the user has changed his username or changed any part of his information? Now we have to implement cache invalidation. So let me show you, I have prepared a file uh, that I can use to update my username. Let me show you the content of the file the file receive uh, the logged ID and also the new username. Um, now let's try to, now wait a minute, I have a, a mistake here. I'm, I need to say new username equal post new username. And let me take a copy from this and let's go to the postman. I'm gonna say uh, the new username is John and the user ID is number one. And let's send now let's confirm in the database okay the name has updated now let's go back to the fetch uh, profile and we send now we are we will keep getting the very same information uh, as before because we did not uh, invalidate the cache during the update uh, uh, in the update file so what we're going to do is we are going to go back to the file we are going to say uh, the cache key name, we are going to set the same name, user colon and uh, logged, which were the variable, yeah, logged user ID, but let me move this a bit down. So now we go to the part where we, uh, where our query succeeds, and then we're going to say redis delete and cache key name so if the query succeed we're going to delete uh, the key and then the profile.php file is going to recreate uh, the cache again so let's send from the postman now let's let's confirm let's put john because sometimes it now let's go to the fetch profile and then we send and as you can see this is the new name and we don't have the cache equal one in here because now we have invalidated the cache and the file had to go to the database because it didn't find the cache key but if we send again we will say we will see the cache equal one because now we are getting the cache version now there's something equally important here i almost forgot to mention it that sometimes part of these information is dynamic like uh, the information depend on the viewer ID. So you, what you will do is you will cache the information just like how we did, but you will override the caching data. You're gonna say the profile details. Uh, for example, if you want to check if 
I am following the profile that I'm fetching the data from. I'm, you can say is following um, equal check if following. And then you're gonna pass the viewer ID and also the profile ID. So I highly suggest that you take all the simple endpoint you have in your API and you use uh, Redis in the way that we have explained in the video. This will significantly increase your API speed and it will save uh, save you from uh, spending so much resources because all the queries that hits your database. Thank you very much.